And here we are coming to the end of week three. And as we're even crafting and recording week three and reading through people's reflections, it's bringing up a lot of questions for us as well. So we thought we'd just like to share those with you. Um, and hopefully this will stimulate more thought and processing for you as well. And some things that I was feeling as we started to move into week three was around the, yeah, perhaps some um, controversy or, or, or differing opinions um, on what I was sharing in terms of having radical self-responsibility. I think you talked about agency. And at what point or at what level does somebody have um, agency or... Mm. Um, yeah, or, or need to take responsibility for their own actions as opposed to what's been prescribed for them or what they've experienced or what they've inherited. And is there like a percentage on that? I mean, I, I think the answer is no, but it's like somebody has <laughs> more ability to have more agency and responsibility depending on your upbringing than somebody who doesn't. So then who has responsibility to take care of those people who maybe can't see that they could potentially have agency, but their situations have dictated and told them that their whole lives that they can't or they don't or they're not worthy of that mm. so they never get to the point of actually you know being able to take any action in that area so it raised a lot of questions for me of like well mm. you know what are we advocating for do i feel like i'm being insensitive or not em empathetic enough or understanding not understanding cultural constructs enough when i say hey everybody has responsibility um mm. and it needs to take that on board or is it a process of moving out of victimhood and giving control and responsibility back uh, so that then we can move forward as a society? And I don't think there's any right or wrong, but I'm just saying these are the reflections and the questions that have come up. Yeah, and I can, I can see why it's getting controversial. Yeah. There's Sarah Stella. Uh, <laughs> it's not my name. <laughs> uh, insofar as that, that whole concept of agency is a really interesting one because within... Uh, philosophy with, with the dead French guys, and I'll be pulled up and bring up dead French guys all the time, but hey, that's, that's all we've got. Um, but within, those, within philosophy, when we think about agency, we can argue between uh, the power of, of the individual as an agent as opposed to the power of the structure. So there's the structure that sits in place or the individual agent. Now, in some of the conversations that we've had through the course, we've talked about structure as being that idea of the dominant discourse and hegemony. And systems. And the systems. And all of the systems that, that pervade into that and that inform that. Mm. Now that's getting back to that whole what stuff that we talked about. What is it that makes mm. up who I am? Mm. Now, if you're part of that dominant discourse, then you sometimes feel like you're acting as a free agent with free will because all of your will and all of your agency, all that stuff you want, is tied up in that discourse. Mm. So um, for people like myself, when I think about my, my um, white middle class male upbringing, I fit perfectly with that structure that talks about who I am and informs my wants and needs as part of the normal. Mm. Now, if you're not part of that normal, you get to question that idea of agency, what power dynamic or what power, yeah, what power dynamic do I have in the structure? And usually it's very, very little, I would suggest. So um, when we're talking about agency, mm. we're thinking about that idea of how can I act with free will inside of a structure that A, may not speak to my needs as an individual or my wants or my, my ends. Now, I can see where the controversy is coming in. Uh, mm. You know, sometimes we, we, we say, well, I've got no sense of agency. I've got no voice within that. I think one of the things that we've been trying to say within the conversations that we're having is if we analyse the discourse, if we find our place within, you know, we, we, we have ourselves and the other, find that similarity and that crossover point within that and understand where we fit within the structure, then that will give us I would suggest a sense of agency. Does, yeah. does that make sense? Is that? Yeah, it does. And two things you mentioned. So something I was talking about this week in the course was around practice mm. and um, and cognitive dissonance. 
And it ultimately came down to what feels good, yep. what feels good at the end of the day. And so when you're talking about um, agency, you know, it can also be about um, what I'm thinking about in terms of taking action is do we feel good at the end of the day with what we've done within mm. the capabilities and the constraints and the systems that we live within? Mm. Mm. Yep. Um, and you also talked about uh, not being or the normal, you know, if you're not the normal, then mm. you, you reflect. And I would say being in the normal is just as important to reflect and to analyze as well. And I know you agree. But I know from my point of view, okay, so I'm a woman, so that's, I haven't been in the power dynamic mm. of, of this world, of being a male of, dominant of a male world, privilege. of a male privilege, but I have been white, right? So I have experienced that privilege. Um, and my reflections in terms of my identity is like, well, how can I be an ally for change? And I think that's where the agency comes in. I think we all have different responsibilities and different agencies available to us. Mm. And for me, when I pause, it's like, okay, so if I'm in the privilege, how can I be an ally for the people who are more disadvantaged than me? And then can I help to share that agency? Mm. And I think that's really interesting because that's, that's part of, and I've said this heaps of time, it's all I've got. But that ties into this conversation here. If we, largely speaking, as, as the mainstream, as the dominant discourse, close up those gaps, mm. right, then how can the other actually infiltrate into that or understand themselves as a part of that dominant discourse, as a part of that structure? So a, a, a constantly going to feel like on, on the outside. So, you know, within these conversations, we've been encouraging people, even if they're from the dominant discourse, to think about what makes that up and what's, you know, how, how that all works. Yeah. And to allow for that coming together. Yeah. And I think underpinning this, this is what our guest lecturer talked about in terms of that acknowledgement underneath mm. as well. Um, of sometimes people just want to be acknowledged because yep. sometimes, I mean, I actually can't understand your experience, you know, as, mm. as, a, as a white Pākehā and Māori male, I'm never really going to be able to walk in your shoes and really understand mm. your experience, right? And, I, and, and we've done a lot of trying to come into the middle, yeah. especially in our working relationship as well, of trying to find this place where we can work together and understand each other. Mm. And, um, but I'll never truly be able to understand, and, and acknowledging that, is powerful yep. so that we can get to a place and I can understand the best that I can within mm. the environment and my own construct. Mm. And that's interesting because that reminds me of, of those conversations we've had around feminism and I've been lucky enough to be to be brought up in a very strong um, a, a, a household with a very strong mother mm. uh, and you know through my studies reading a lot of, of feminism but I can't be a feminist. I can't, I can't, like you're saying, I can't understand what it is to be a woman. I can't step into your, into your shoes. But type. But, but I, yeah, exactly that same thing. I can emphasise, uh, empathise. Empathise, yes. I can do that. Yeah. Uh, and understand there's some commonalities, but I can't actually take that space. Yeah. So I'll always be sitting here. Yeah. But there's, there's, there's another um, small bit of theory that I want to chuck in here. We're just riffing this. There's this other small bit of theory that I want to chuck in, um, something that uh, um, a, a theorist called naive complicity. Naive complicity. Mm. Now, sometimes when the dominant discourse, if they close those doors, they judge the other on what they're not. You know, good, bad, black, white, east, west, those mm. sorts of things. Mm. Now, sometimes the other takes on those stereotypes naively and complicitly they're complicit in their own othering and when that happens they're actually removing their ability to gain agency to say actually i see how i work with the dominant discourse and i'm not just what you say i'm a whole lot of other things and this is what i'm bringing to the table as well yeah so um you know that idea of, of naive complicity sometimes we're naively complicit in our own othering now, that's a, that's a big statement, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it makes me think that then it's really important for us to know our own identity 
so we don't get sucked into the othering of something else and often probably coming from a want or a desire for a sense of belonging mm. you know trying to fit in mm. but actually losing ourselves in the process yep um, exactly yep. so losing that true essence of who we are what what makes up our, our our own discourse but then also buying into the stereotypes that are placed on us by others and therefore yeah being qualified against something that we're not and losing our sense of identity and agency. If we contribute to digging a hole, that's mm. where we get to live. Mm. Is that a decent analogy? <laughs> which then brings us back into the whole cycle and the process that we, we kind of come back to the what, which we explain this, you know, it's this, it's this circle, what, so what, now what, and then it just keeps feeding back into each other all the time. Mm. Yeah. So for, for, for me to understand you as, as, a, as, a, as a female, for you to understand me as an Indigenous male, we have to be open to A, understanding who we are as individuals, first of all, yes. makes up our, con our, our constructs. Yeah. Be open to, to accept the narrative of the other. Yeah, acknowledge that. Yeah, acknowledge yeah. that there is difference and acknowledge that there are similarities and then try and build on those similarities. It might just be sort of just glints and just touching at times, but... Yeah, working yeah. together. And I think in my experience, getting it wrong and being open to getting it wrong. Mm. Yeah. You know, and there's been times, even with me and you, where we've been maybe a bit more like this. Yep. yep. You know, and then times where we've found the middle ground. Yep. And important always to be willing to engage. Mm. Okay? Engage in those conversations because if we don't, if we're not willing to engage, if we sit back and say, well, this is my construct as enforced by somebody else. You know, this is who I am, I'm not even going to engage, then we become naively complicit and we lose that sense of agency and then we can't, you know, the more we, the, the less we engage, the less we can engage. Yeah. Is that where you are going before, that controversial stuff? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I've got any more <laughs> answers on, on how we build agency um, or how much responsibility each person needs to take, but I think it comes down to each individual to decide that. Mm, yep, exactly, yep. And you may have noticed the lighting's changed. That's because the sun's gone down. It's time for us to rest. It's the shortest day of the year. It's the shortest day. Let's go home. <laughs>